So what are the beneficial uses of our waters? Art kind of touched on this, and so did Diana. Scenic beauty, no doubt. You know, that's something we enjoy. We enjoy our shorelines. We enjoy our property. We pay a lot of taxes for it. That's a very important beneficial use. The swimming. We want our families to come over and also enjoy our property. We want to go swimming off of our land. Boating, very important also. Then there's fishing and hunting. So, I think it's important to address water quality, and as I stated earlier, I'm going to talk about water clarity as a measure of the water quality. All of the water quality data collected by the DNR is available on our website, and any of you can go look at it anytime. There's no special database or anything that you need a password for. I put the internet link up there, and it may be on one of the handouts that we have tonight. Um, also, if you just go to the DNR webpage, you can, in the little search box, you can type in water quality reports, and it'll, the first link there, if you click on that, you'll be able to see all of the counties that we have data for, which is nearly every county. One thing I want to say is, you know, the Three sites that we have the most data for, for our long-term trend monitoring, are gonna be in Calumet County, and you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to these sites, because at Winnebago, there's, there's a lot of monitoring stations that you'd be able to see data for, and some of them were only monitored, you know, for a year or two. So if you want the most comprehensive data set with the most values, check out these sites because you'll find the most data there. Feel free to check out the other data, it's just as valuable, but for a quick look, and you know, I have a couple screenshots that I could show you afterwards, you know, if you aren't internet savvy and would like more of a guide on how to get to that, those water quality reports. So here's one graph that I generated, and it's looking at the water clarity data in the deep hole south Winnebago near Fond du Lac. And it goes from 1990 to 2010. And you can see a lot of natural variability you know, throughout the years. And so what I did is I included this trend line here. And you can kind of see that it's it's getting higher, so our water clarity is getting better. That's what the data that we have show for the deep hole south of Bago. Another thing I want you to keep in mind is we have this spike here in 2010, and that was observed at the deep hole near Fond du Lac on May 25th. So when we talk about the water clarity benefiting aquatic plants, this is something to keep in mind that it's we had really great water clarity early in the season. The data that we have doesn't always reflect everybody's observations, and that's something important to recognize. You know, if we're out at that deep hole site doing our water clarity, collecting our water samples, it may look different than what you guys are seeing on your shoreline. So I just, I want, you know, I, I understand that as well. A little bit of history, you know, in the 60s we experienced a lot of algae blooms. And then with the Clean Water Act, we started looking at, you know, how can we improve this water quality? We started looking at people that were directly discharging pollutants to our waters, um, wastewater treatment facilities, municipalities. In the 80s and 90s, we began looking at other sources of runoff, urban and rural. And that's also called non-point source pollution, so stormwater runoff and, and things like that. What types of things can we do there to improve the water quality of all of the state's waters? So what is the role of aquatic plants? Why do we need them? They absorb wind and wave energy. So why is that important? Well. It's going to help hold the bottom sediments in place, so they're not going to be blown around. It's going to help the water clarity. Also going to produce oxygen. That's 
pretty critical in the aquatic habitat. It's going to benefit fish, other aquatic life, and also wildlife. Aquatic plants also absorb nutrients. And as they absorb those nutrients, they're using them. There's less nutrients available in the water for algae. And Lake Winnebago is considered a shallow lake system. And typically what we see is those shallow systems are usually algae dominated or plant dominated. So in the 60s we were more algae dominated and now we're kind of seeing a trend toward more of a plant dominated system. And that was according to last year. So Now a little bit about submerged aquatic plants. They typically become established in May through June. They're going to require sunlight early in the growth phases. And if you remember that other graph that I showed you, we had excellent water clarity early in the growing season. So we're having clear water. And these plants were able to get established much earlier in the season. Basically, the growing season was bumped up by about two weeks last year. So we had this huge abundance of aquatic plants and they impacted some of the beneficial uses that we talked about earlier. First thing I wanted to talk about was your recreational response. And these are things that we heard from you guys during those listening sessions, okay? So we heard it was bad for swimming and boating. You guys had to cancel your backyard activities. There was a loss of revenue from anglers and other recreational users and it was bad for tourism. So that's one of our beneficial uses. How did the fishery respond? There were numerous reports that it was some of the best pan fishing that people can remember. And as part of the lake-wide fishery assessments, you know, they're, they're seeing that perch, bluegill, crappie, largemouth bass numbers are all on the rise. And the increase in the fish numbers coincides with the water clarity and the increased aquatic vegetation. Then there's another fishery response to this system. And we need to consider the economic impact of the fishery of the Winnebago system. And that's $234 million annually. And it supports 4,300 jobs. And that's, that's significant. That's very important. So we need to keep that in mind. Wildlife saw a similar response, especially the waterfowl. That was also reported as being the best in years. And the, water, the migratory waterfowl numbers were also a result of the increased water clarity and the aquatic vegetation, same thing as fishery. So our mission and challenge is to try to manage all of these beneficial uses, and this also ties in to that diagram that Diane showed during her introduction, okay? All of those points on the circle, including the question mark, because the question mark could be your, your beneficial use, or your beneficial use, or anybody in this room's beneficial use, they could all be different. And those things need to be taken into consideration when we're managing a system like this. Now, in the short term, you, know, you can do aquatic plant management, and there's some permitting things that can be done, and Chuck Fitzgibbon, excuse me, Fitzgibbon is gonna talk about that shortly. And then more of a long-term solution we can look at lake and aquatic plant management grants and how to kind of get groups together, mobilize, there's power in numbers. And if we can get some groups together, get some great ideas and get an aquatic you know, uh, plant management plan for this area of Winnebago, those are all good things. And I'm gonna touch on how we can start that process. 
So I'm going to pass it over to Chuck, and he's going to talk to you about the aquatic plant management and protection program. Thank you.